If you've ever had a question about how faith and science go together, or if you've ever had someone ask you how a new scientific discovery goes along with your faith life, I'm Danny Seckbert, and I'm here to help. I am the Catechist Scientist. At this point, you're like, great, but who are you and why should I care? Uh, so let's rewind and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. And so first of all, I grew up in a suburban town in Kansas to a lovely family. I had two amazing parents and one great older brother. Now all four of us were gifted from God, with this amazing talent for knowledge. We were all very smart, but one thing we were especially good at was math. Just for a little bit of understanding, take this last Christmas. I went home to see my family and I have an eight-year-old niece and so I was trying to help her learn fractions and so I had her help me with a sugar cookie recipe. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, if this recipe calls for three quarters of a cup but we're making a triple batch, how many cups do we need? And she just stares me down like this, like, you know an eight-year-old's like sassy stare like, Aunt Danny. Our whole family is great at math. You don't need my help. <laughs> so, even this little eight-year-old is very aware that our family is very good at math. And so with all of my family being so smart, it made me very competitive. That I wanted to be smarter than them. I wanted to be better. And that served me very well throughout high school. That I did very well, kept my 4.0 in all my honors classes, but... Then I went to college, and college is very different than this small town high school, and I had two really life-changing experiences. So the first one was when I got an undergraduate research opportunity. The first time that I had a chance to learn things that no one else knew. All these years up till then, I had been studying things that other people had found out many years before me, and I was just relearning things that they had learned. And so this was the first time that I got to go out and I got to search and I got to solve problems that were all my own, that no one else had ever looked at. And that was so cool. I was so excited. I love being able to go to my boss and be like, look what I found. Look at this amazing discovery I came up with, even if it was the littlest thing. Like I was so proud and so happy. The second life-changing experience was when I had this really persistent nun at this point, I wasn't on fire for my faith. I was a cradle Catholic. I'd always had it around. I went to youth group when I was in high school, but it wasn't something I was passionate about, I wouldn't say. And so I was going to these Sunday masses, not doing anything else with the center, and there was this one nun, and she was just so persistent that I go on the March for Life. And so every Sunday, she would come up to me, Danny, oh, she's Italian. She's great. Um, and she would say, Danny, come on the March for Life. Danny, come on the March for Life. And so eventually, I signed up. I went to this March for Life. It was great. But on the bus, she was like, Danny, come on this retreat. Danny, come on this retreat. And I was like, oh, okay, sister, I'll go. <laughs> and sure enough, it changed my life so much. Uh, I Going on this retreat made me a part of this community. And I didn't know how much I needed that. So this Catholic Campus Center isn't just an amazing community of amazing people but it also has amazing resources. So first of all, it has this huge library. It has tons and tons of books of anything you could ever want to read, whether it's uh, doctors of the church, whether it's past popes, whether it's just really smart Christian people, or whether it's philosophers that weren't Christian at all. They had it all. It was amazing. But then they also had something that most other Catholic campus centers don't have, that they had classes on Sunday night for free. So all you did was you show up, take some notes. There were no homework, no tests. It was just pure learning from people that knew a lot. There were very educated people at this Catholic Campus Center that really wanted you to better understand your faith. The good news for me is that there is a never-ending supply of knowledge when it comes to both science and my Catholic faith. The good news for you is that after learning all of this, I really want to share my knowledge that I've found with you. So. I had a really heartbreaking experience about two years ago when I was on one of my quests of knowledge and digging and digging, and I found out that the number one reason that young people, so under the age of 25, 
leave the Catholic faith is that the things that they're learning in school don't match up with their Catholic teachings or their religious teachings. And as someone who sees the things I've learned in school, like science, and I see my religious teaching, and I see the beauty, all I can see is how wonderfully they go together. And so I was just like, what? How is this possible? Why do people think this way? And then I started thinking, and I think I've kind of come to an understanding that part of the reason they think this way is because these are such separate ideas that no one is choosing to bring them together. So you have school, and you have them talk about science, and they talk about it in this building. Then you have church, and you talk about it in this building, and you never talk about them anywhere else. And I just don't understand why. Because there's so many ways that you can teach about the faith through science. Or you can teach about science by talking about faith. So I think that we need to stop that. I think the first solution is to talk about them everywhere. Talk about church everywhere. Talk about science everywhere. So if you're in a church setting, bring up science. Whether it's through an analogy or whether it is one of those deeper teachings. And how does this fit with my faith? Or if you're in a science setting, if you are part of a robotics team, or if you are a Boy Scout and you're talking about nature, if things like that, bring in the faith, bring in the religion. And so uh, last summer, I went to Society of Catholic Scientists. Yes, it's a great organization. And they had their national conference. And I had this gentleman who is in charge of a robotics team. And... So he was like, okay, I love what you're talking about. I get it. But as leader of this robotics team, how do I include that in my teachings? Like, give me an example. So I thought, and I pondered, and then I just started rattling off answers. So I was like, well, if uh, the bolt that holds the pieces together is like how prayer keeps us closer to God, and so we can keep doing our job just like that bolt keeps letting the arms and the liver keep doing their job. Or the electricity that powers the robot is like our souls. You can't really see it, but we can know how that it's our life force powering us. Or how when there's a lever, you're distributing the weight of the object, and that's what we're doing when we're offering up our sacrifices to God, that he's taking on some of the weight and making it easier for us. And like I was just going. I was just going. <laughs> and the bottom line is that throughout my years of learning, I have not found nothing but beauty and agreement between these two passions of mine. And so that's why I'm here. I'm here to share my knowledge about science, about church teaching, and I'll be making more videos that answer some of the big questions where people really wrestle with how these two teachings go together. But I'm only one person, so I also want to help other catechists or teachers of the faith spread this good news, even if you're not a doctor of science like me. Now, we as Christians are called to evangelize. In Matthew 28, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But to reach their hearts, those that are really searching, we have to answer the questions that they're asking. We can't just throw general knowledge their way. And in small ways, you and I can change the world. You don't need to know all the inner workings of science. No one ever will. <laughs> but you can use those little tools, what you do know, to help lead others to Christ and help bridge the gap that people think is there between these two great topics. All you need is a passion for teaching and a willingness to learn. So let me help you with that. Thanks again for watching this video. If you're interested or want to know more, please subscribe to my channel. And as I said, more videos will be coming out soon. But if there's a topic you really want to know about, leave a comment down below and I will try to get to it. Um, for other day-to-day -day thoughts and musings about this beautiful science-faith relationship, check out my website, www.catechistscientist.com. There I will have more information, including some blog posts, interviews with fellow scientists, or find me on any of my social media platforms at IST squared, because both titles, Catechist and Scientist, in an IST, and I'm a nerd. <laughs> Thank you again for watching, and I hope to hear from you.